Hey everybody, this is my Pathfinder adventure card game playthrough of Rise of the Rune Lords, which is of course based on the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path for the Pathfinder RPG. This idea to do a solo playthrough of of a card game like this comes directly from Black Belt Gaming YouTube channel. I quite enjoyed it, thought it looked like fun, so I figured I'd I'd give it a try myself. So apologies to Black Belt Gaming, but also thank you to Black Belt Gaming for, for the idea and setting a great example of, of how these can be done. But this card, the Adventure Path, that's what dictates which adventures you play and in what order. So as dictated by that card, the first thing to do is to set up the adventure for Burnt Offerings. Now within the adventure of Bur Burnt Offerings, there are five different scenarios. So the first scenario is Attack on Sandpoint. And if you're familiar with Rise of the Rune Lords, that is familiar to you. The picture also kind of suggests what's going on. I'll avoid too many spoilers, but suffice it to say that Sandpoint, the town of Sandpoint, gets attacked by a bunch of goblins. So the first scenario within the adventure is Attack on Sandpoint. That's this card. This card shows you the villain and the henchman, it's a bit blurry, the villain um, for this for this scenario is Rip Nugget and Stickfoot, so it's a, a two villain on one card scenario, and uh, there are two henchmen, Suto Kaijutsu and uh, Goblin Raiders, and the Goblin Raiders is the generic one, Tsuto Kajitsu is a, a named character, so there'll be one of him, there'll be one of Rip Nugget and Stickfoot, and then the Goblin Raiders, the generic henchmen, uh, will be seated into the decks. Now there's one global rule for this, for this um, scenario, and that is if you defeat a monster with the goblin trait, roll a d6. On one, each character at each location takes f one fire damage. So that's important to remember. I will probably forget it, but that is kind of important to remember because there are lots of goblins. So the, the, the goal of the card game is to go to different locations. And these locations are expressed in the form of a card deck, a distinct card deck. So we're gonna go to each location and try to hunt down the villain. Now, sometimes we're not going to find the villain. We're going to find one of his henchmen. Other times, at some point, we will certainly find the villain, and then we'll have to fight the villain and defeat the villain to win the game. And when I say we, I, I mean uh, the characters that I'm going to play. So I'm going to play as Sioni, the sorceress, and as... Valeros, the fighter. So this is a solo playthrough, but I'm choosing to play as two different characters, uh, partly to experience each different class, like a spellcasting class and a melee class. So that's kind of the the rationale. But there's also a lot more interplay and um, sort of more more strategy, I think, if you play with two two player characters. So the the very first thing that you have to do uh, when when setting up for this is you have to build the decks for the characters. But this isn't a really a deck building game as such. And there are suggested decks for each character in the rules. And so that's what I've followed. For Sioni, there's her card list there. And for Valeros, there's his card list there. So based on that, I have gotten, I've drawn out for uh, Sioni, a couple of spells, Invisibility and Force Missile. I feel like there's another one in here. Could be wrong. Hmm. I feel like there should be three. Yeah, she should have Arcane Armor as well. So I will have to get that from the spell deck. So here's the, um, the spell deck. So these are all the different spells. And I'm just going to look through here until I find uh, Arcane Armor. To, to build her complete deck. There's Arcane Armor. So I can give that to her. Um, anything with the basic tag or trait is valid for her starting deck. 
So if I didn't want to give her arcane armor and in instead wanted to give her detect magic, I could do that. Uh, force missile she already has, but I could give her two force missiles if I wanted to focus uh, on attack. I could give her mending. This is a basic one. So uh, you have a little bit of flexibility if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, you, you can just go with their suggestions. So, And that's what I'm doing right now. So three spells. She has some allies, four allies. She's got some blessings, which are very flexible cards, which will you'll see them in action eventually. And then items, uh, three items. So a potion of fortitude, a blast stone, and bracers of protection. And again, all of these have that basic trait. And that's what you have to... When, when building the initial deck, that's that's kind of a requirement, that they're all basic um, trait, trait cards. For the... And, and, and all of these come from... I mean, not only from the suggestion in the rule book, but it is also spelled out uh, what her what her deck can consist of. So here you see that on her card, she, her favorite spell, her favorite card is a spell, and her and she gets three spells, three items, four allies, and five blessings. So that's that's the guidelines. Similarly for Valeros, his favorite card is. Uh, a weapon, and he gets five weapons, three armors, two items, two allies, and three blessings. And so he's got sort of that assortment. Some blessings, a dagger, some chain mail, a wooden shield, night watch, ally, some blessings, long sword, mattock, potion of hiding, so short sword, long sword, mace, and another wooden shield and some blessings. So it's a really quick process. It's not, it isn't sort of Magic the Gathering complexity. You don't have to learn about like mana curves or anything like that. You just you look at their character card. You figure out what goes into their deck. Uh, you follow the suggestions if you prefer, or you just look for that basic tag and build them a deck accordingly. Everything that they are capable of as sort of first level characters are way over here on the left. Those are all the everything further to the right are power-ups or level-ups really and uh, these are the card this is a card feat he's also got each character has skills and those are attributes in the rpg so you've got strength dex constitution intelligence wisdom and charisma but there may also be extra skill bonuses to those for instance valeros has a strength of a d10 so he gets to use his 10-sided die to roll for strength but if he's in melee combat, he gets a melee bonus of plus three, f just a flat plus three. So he get, he gets not just his d10, but a plus three, which is hugely powerful. And then finally, he's got just power feats as well. So first of all, he's got a hand size to start with of four. That'll be important when we deal cards. He's proficient with light armor, heavy armor, and weapons. And then he's got... Uh, an ability here to add 1d4 to another character's combat check as long as they're in the same location. And then he also has this ability that when he plays a weapon, if it ever tells him to discard the weapon, he can choose to recharge it instead. And this is an interesting mechanic because in this game, your character gets a draw deck. And so you'll be drawing from the deck that you've built which I haven't shuffled yet, but let's just let's go with it. So that, that's actually a pretty good hand because you've got a little bit of weapon, a little bit of armor, an ally, and a blessing. So that could be his hand. Now, if he takes damage, he has to discard from his hand. And then he has to draw from his draw deck. And he can continue to do that. If he takes damage, he'll he'll draw two more. And and so, so essentially his draw deck double doubles as his health his health counter because if you draw if, if you get damaged a lot or you're, you're choosing to discard cards for some reason and you ever have to draw and there's nothing there to draw then you're dead that character's dead so discarding is a very dangerous it's a very expensive thing so anytime you can recharge 
uh, in that in that case, instead of discarding, you just put it under your your draw deck. It's not in your hand. You still have to draw back up to your hand size, but you've recharged. You haven't actually lost that card sort of out of play. Sioni has abilities as well, of course. Um, she's got a bonus, not to strength and melee, but to her arcane and charisma, which is a d12. That's her strongest characteristic is her charisma. So that's a d12. I mean, she's a sorcerer, so that makes sense. d12, if she's casting a spell that's arcane, she gets a plus two. So that's a really good, that's her definitely her strongest uh, ability, or, or rather her, her strongest attribute. She's also got um, the ability to discard a card to be able to roll her arcane and a d6. So that's a d12 and a d6 plus her two bonus for arcane with the attack, fire, and magic traits. It counts as casting a spell. So if we're sitting there with a hand that doesn't happen to have any spells in it, we could discard a card to give Sioni the ability to cast a spell, even though there's not a spell in her in her hand at that moment. So that's really, really useful. I mean, it's expensive because she's discarding a card, but uh, when you're in a pinch, that's kind of important. She has also got the ability to automatically succeed at a check to recharge a spell, or, uh, yeah, a spell, uh, with the arcane trait. So if she's casting a spell, rather than a lot of the spells say to discard the uh, the card in order to cast it like arcane Ar armor here says discard this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by two well she doesn't have to do that she can do the recharge check and she can choose to automatically succeed at that check thereby just recharging that so that's huge spells are a huge benefit to sioni so that's the that's the setup for the player decks. Now we need to build the location decks. And the location and I'll I'll shuffle the player decks later. The location decks are defined by the uh scenario. On the back of the scenario it tells you for a game of one player you need three different locations and it tells you which locations and and that'll be significant. Uh, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, and then for two players, you add a fourth. For three players, you add a fifth and six and seven and so, so forth. So I'll, I'll be doing four locations because even though I'm doing a solo playthrough, I am playing with those two different characters. So the, um, the locations defined by the scenario are City Gate, Sandpoint Cathedral, Town Square, and Swallowtail Festival. And now each of these locations has on its face a card list. And that's what you have to put into each location. So I'll do that now. Swallowtail Festival has, for instance, uh, two monsters in it. So I'll go to my monster deck and put down two different monsters. I guess I shouldn't really necessarily stare at them, try to make it a little bit of a surprise for myself. Uh, and then a barrier, it needs one barrier. So it's a barrier card. And in real life, I wouldn't be looking at these cards at all. I mean, I guess you can, it doesn't really matter, but I kind of do like it to be um, kind of a surprise sometimes. So that's the flaming mace, spell, Oh, spell zero. No spells in this location. No armor in this location. One item and two allies. So there's an item. And there's one ally. And another ally. And then two blessings. Two blessings. So that's that location. Actually, I might as well just build them all while I'm at it. Uh, it doesn't take that long, as you can tell. So this one lists a barrier, two monsters, one weapon, and two spells. There's one spell, one weapon, another spell, 
zero armor, one item, one, uh, two allies. So there's an item, here's two allies, zero blessings, that's easy. And then we got the city gate, requiring two monsters, one barrier and two weapons. There's a barrier, there's one weapon, it's two weapons, two items and two allies. It's one item, it's another item, ally, and ally. And then finally, the Sandpoint Cathedral, and this is the fourth location for the, because I have two two player characters. Zero barriers, but two monsters and two spells. There's a spell. There's another spell. I believe it said two monsters. One item, one ally, and three blessings. So there's one item, one ally, three blessings. Okay. So these location decks are more or less built now. And the game will be each character going to a location and drawing a card from that location deck and then encountering it in some way. And an encounter is usually, well, it's either combat or it's a check to acquire the item that you just drew. And you acquire items by rolling die. And you go to combat by rolling die and using your different skills and possibly using cards out of your own hand. If you're in combat, a short sword might be a useful thing. If you are trying to persuade someone to come over to your side, maybe you can get an ally to talk to them uh, and add to your, your bonus when you're, when you're trying to, to persuade them to come over to your side, and so on. So that's the idea. But to finish these off, we need to integrate the villain, the henchman. These are four cards, each of which needs to be completed in order to close the locations. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn them over, kind of shuffle them up a little bit, put one each into each location deck. And of course I will shuffle these off camera before starting the actual game. And that's it. That's the setup. Oh, there's one more thing, actually. So while you're exploring each location, you only have so much time to do it in. So you count out 30 blessing cards, which, I mean, they could be any card, honestly. I could just use a, a standard playing poker deck or something. Um, actually, that's not true. Sometimes it Sometimes it's significant, the blessing that's in the deck. But generally, this is just a timer mechanism. As, as each character takes a turn, I'll flip over a card. And you do that 30 times. And when you run out, then the game is over, whether you have found the villain or not. So I'll count that out just to make sure that I only have 30 in there. But that's the setup. Not too bad, as you can tell. And... Um, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. It, it emulates the RPG feel really, really effectively, which I think you'll see as I start playing through. And I will start playing through next time. Thanks for watching.